Okay, I am now recording, yes. Yes, okay. So, Stuart, what you, uh, what you, uh, what you been up to? <laughs> Living life in the big city, man. <laughs> now, now, it's, uh, oh. there's, there's been a, there has been a massive heat wave out here. I mean, not massive heat wave, but, you know, pretty bad heat wave out here. So, just trying to, uh, survive through that. <laughs> Yeah. I've had a what busy you? month. A very busy month. Oh my lord. Somebody died. There was an election. And then I stepped away from the last Action Hero podcast because I was like, oh, I, I hope it works. Because I was a little worried. I was a little worried. I think it works. But no, it, it, it turned out way awesome. It really did. Yeah. And like, I think I'm getting the hang of editing it now. And, like, whatever I do take out, it's really stuff where we just go way off base, because the stuff I took out was just, <laughs> like, we, I like the TV edit stuff. We didn't need that. And then there was something about the Planet of the Apes, where I literally go through everything. And it's <laughs> funny, while I was editing it, I found out we have, like, little ticks, Like, both of us. Like, I'll repeat myself after I say a statement, and then with you... You do this thing where you start the thought, and then you restart the thought, and then complete the thought. <laughs> and it's seamless. Yes. Like I like I've noticed as well. Listening, I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> it's like we, we both do like we have similar things, which I find <laughs> kind of funny. But after you hear it and it's all edited, like it's kind of smooth. Like no one's really going to notice anything. It's like our it's like our brains are each tuned directly into that tick. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> it's like we know what we want to say, but we gotta we gotta think it out. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> pilot, what's a pilot? Well, the way they pick TV shows is they make one show. That show's called a pilot. And then they show that one show to the people who pick shows. And on the strength of that one show, they decide if they want to make more shows. It's showtime! What have you done? What have you done? People need dramatic examples to shake them out of apathy. Oh my God. They said the age of heroes would never come again. It has to. I may have gone too far in a few places. This is your responsibility! You're not prepared for this! I'm working on it! So, um, this week, Stuart, well, hang on, we, we have to do, like, the intro, so, hello guys, this is me, Frank, and... This is Stuart. And we're here to talk about one of Stuart's favorite movies. Constantine. Yes. Now, this one, <laughs> I'm not that familiar with, because I, I think this is either the second or third time I've watched it tonight. I have not watched it that many times, so you're going to have to guide me through. I do have some notes here, and while watching it, I did form an opinion. I was like, hmm, okay, yes. <laughs> and, and I don't know, it's, um, it's, okay, so I, I assume you don't watch those kind of movies all the time, you know, like Underworld or Ghost Rider or I, Frankenstein and things like that. I assume you don't watch those. Wow, you just... <laughs> uh, I, I Frankenstein, absolutely not. Never seen it. Never never want to. Um, I saw the first Underworld by accident. I have never seen any of the other, any of the other films in the Underworld series. Never want to. Yeah. Um, and what was the other one? Uh, hang on. Oh, damn. I... Uh, I Frankenstein Underworld or Ghost Rider. Oh, Ghost Rider. I have seen the first Ghost Rider. There's two Ghost Riders, right? Uh, yes, I've only, only seen the, I've only seen the first one, but there are two. Okay, yes, I have seen the first Ghost Rider. Yeah, it was fun because it's Nicolas Cage, and he's being Nicolas Cage in it. Yeah, um, but yeah. <laughs> Apparently, Nicolas yeah. Cage was almost Constantine. I don't know if he did research on that, but... What? Yes. Like, in um, the 90s, they went through, like, several music directors, which I find interesting, because 
like the guy who directed this mostly directs music videos and yeah in the Francis 90s Lawrence. yeah in the 90s they uh, att- approached Paul Hunter and Tarzam Singh the guy who did um uh, the cell oh, wow yeah they wanted one of those guys to direct this movie and i believe uh Tarzam Singh walked away from the project because of Nicolas Cage cuz Nicolas Cage had his own ideas and i'm thinking oh, okay so that became ghost rider then Dude, if I if I won some massive lottery where it was like my take home cash was enough to fund a Tarsum Singh version of Constantine, like I would just give it all to him. <laughs> I would just be like, take the take this like, you know, this van full of bags of cash and go make me your Constantine film. <laughs> yeah, I guess he does have that vision because I, I I've been wanting I've been re wanting to watch the cell. I remember Dude, the seeing cell that cell is so good. Yeah, it's so good. And he he also did a movie that was it was I it was not as good as the cell, but it was still pretty good called The Fall. Yes, I, I don't know whether that. you've ever seen that, but Never like yeah. the cell is like if David Fincher like took LSD and made Seven. Yeah, you know? right. And the fall is kind of like that, except it's not really as menacing a story, you know. Yeah, it's probably not really a menacing story at all. No, so. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do recommend it if you ever get a chance. Yeah, it, after, it's a good one. After like seeing what they were approaching or those directors they were approaching for this, I kind of want to check out those other directors. But the point I was getting to is this movie is similar to those, but only towards the third act, I should say. Because mm-hmm. I really liked this movie in the beginning. The first act sort of, or not the first act, like the first and second act, I should say, reminded me a lot of Hellboy. Well, so like, okay, that's actually, I I actually have a note about that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and oh yeah, I do have a note that too, because one of the reasons why they didn't want to call it Hellblazer is because they wanted to avoid Hellraiser and Hellboy. And Hellboy mm. was released around the same time, and I believe Hellraiser was just ending in the 90s, which they had original scripts back then. Because they mm-hmm. they've been trying to remake this since like the '90s. There was that girl Donner. Um, uh, she's the wife of Richard Donner. She produced a lot of those superhero movies like X Men, mm-hmm. Superman. She wanted to do this Constantine way back in the '90s, and it just never got traction until they changed the character of Constantine to American, and then the script started getting traction. Ah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And um, where was I? I was completing my thought. Oh yeah, so. The first two acts are like really like Hellboy, where the world feels real. Yeah, there's like a fantasy side of it that nobody really knows about. It's like an underground. Everyone, there's like a lingo. It doesn't really hold your hand. It yes. just goes with it. But then towards the third act, I would say when he goes into the building with the big giant shotgun, I'm like, all right, this is where it's <laughs> this is where it's starting to turn into I Frankenstein territory, which are really like I I was kind of disappointed with the ending. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, you're, jump ahead. So you're talking about the when he goes into so from everything where he goes into the hospital. Yes. Um, you there's don't some like. co- okay. Yeah, there's some cool ideas, but it just kinda goes schlocky because he there's that room full of people that you don't really know. They don't hold your hand for that. Yeah. Uh, I assume yeah. they're demons. Well, they're half demons. They're yeah, half yeah. breeds. So I think that has always been my biggest problem with the film. I do love it, but I wouldn't give it like five stars. Oh yeah, no. You know, no. I'd give it like three and a half, maybe four. Yeah, I've watched it probably ten times. Yeah, yeah. But it's not. It's by no means a perfect film, and mm-hmm. I think part of it is because of, like you said, it just feels like there's a lot of information that they left out. Yes. And some of that, I think, works really well because it's like they don't hold your hand with, nope. like, all the characters no, and, they like, don't. some of the things that are going on. Yeah. And I like that. I like the fact that, yeah. like, these people just, they just know each other. And you may not know who the, uh, I forget what his name is, but the... um the priest guy, I forget Hennessy. what his character's... Yeah, Hennessy, yeah. Um, yeah. Roger Ebert pointed out in his review. But he just shows up in that opening scene, and he's, they start, you know, him and Constantine start talking, and you're like, okay, who is this guy? Right. But I like the fact that Francis Lawrence is like, yeah, you're not going to know who this is at first, but you will get to know him. Yeah. Like, you'll understand who he is. Right. But on the same token, they take that 
a little bit too far throughout the whole movie where it's like there's certain things that just happen and you're like what is happening right now right why is this happening who are these people they touch on the whole half breed thing sort of in the beginning of the film very briefly never, yeah yeah but they never identify that the people in the hospital are half breeds and i actually didn't realize that until i watched there was a comic con live stream thing that they did so it had keanu and it had francis lawrence and i think akiva goldsman they were talking about the fact that like michelle monaghan who is you know a, a star i mean not a huge star but a star yeah um she was kind of like coming up at that time yes and she had the she had kind of like i wouldn't say like a big role but like a moderate sized role in the film where she was a half-breed demon that constantine was in a relationship with yes and so she was in all these scenes and they ended up cutting her out. They talked about this in, in the live stream. They ended up cutting her out because it just worked better when Constantine was alone. Yes. You know, they didn't want him to have a girlfriend or some kind of like, you know, attachment or anything. That's they just so wanted funny him in the to movie. be alone. Yeah. Um, but she shows up in that scene. Holy you see water. Her for yes. like once. Yeah. She says, yeah, she says that one line. And I always wondered. I didn't pick up on it at the time when I first saw the film, but years later, I was like, why is Michelle Monaghan in this? And why is she only in one scene where she has one line? Yeah. And who are these people? Right. But they explained it that she was, you know, a half-breed demon and that those were all the collected half-breed demons who were there to, like, witness mamans or how i don't know how you pronounce it maimon or whatever yeah his like uh you know coming into the world or whatever so sorry that feels like a huge aside but at the same time no no, like, no 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 this is all good this kind is of talking about that <laughs> yeah this is all rolling in because i just wanted to jump right into this since i'm jumping far ahead let's let's jump back to how you first watched this because i feel like that's always important when we talk about these movies is how we first watched this or what got us into it for me it, it was just like a movie that came out you know in 2005 and it probably had an interesting trailer mm -hmm. and so me and a couple of friends went to go see it and i remember not being particularly impressed by it at the time yeah. there were things that i liked about it but overall i felt like Eh, I, I don't really care about this, but there's like a group of movies that have done this for me over the years where it's like they just stick with me, mm -hmm. you know, and I end up watching them over and over and over again. And the more I watch them, the more I like them. And Shutter Island was an example of that. I remember yeah. the first time I saw Shutter Island in the theater, I wouldn't say I was particularly impressed by it. I thought it kind of looked cool. But I didn't really, I just wasn't really going for it. But then I think I saw it on Netflix like a couple of years later. And I ended up watching it probably like three or four times over the course of like a couple of weeks. And became kind of obsessed with it for a little while. And I wouldn't say that Constantine is exactly that. But like I said, I have probably watched this movie like ten times at least. Yeah, yeah. So, it's just one of those movies that every time I see it, it gets better and I enjoy it more. Not perfect, yeah. but... Yeah, I get you, I get you. My history with Constantine, I believe, started with comic books? It's hard to pinpoint. It might have been the trailer, it might have been comic books, I'm not sure. Because it was 2005, 2005 was the year where it sucked for movies... It was mm. it was mostly remakes. I don't know if you recall. There was like Stepford Wives. There was Bewitched. There was War of the Worlds. Bad News Bears. Uh, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Batman Begins. Uh, it was all remakes. And then um, also Devil's Rejects came out the well, same year. I sorry to sorry to go off on a tangent here, but would you consider Batman Begins a remake? Well, at that at that time, you would think it was a prequel to 89, or at least I thought so. Okay. At I've, that I've time. Always can, I always considered it like a reboot. Yeah, but that back then, I don't even think that was a term. I think it was just remakes or prequels. It could be, although I will say 
in your in your favor that I do think that Batman Begins had a Burton-esque quality to it. And it ends with the Joker card, so you just assume they're talking about Jack Napier. Yeah. Because that's what I thought. I'm like, oh, okay, so this will lead to, you know, the Nicholson verse. Because in that movie, it does have that cartoonish, um, um, what's that, the Burroughs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm sure someone will be yelling at us in the comments, like, it's this, you morons! <laughs> Don't you watch Nolan? <laughs> <laughs> but like uh is it narrows i thought it was narrow anyway <laughs> oh i did you say narrows because i thought i thought you said burrows i probably i don't know burrows narrows whatever it, it is narrows though. Na- it was narrows yeah. yeah but at yeah. that time it was just like remakes and constantine kind of stood out to me because i'm like oh i like keanu i saw this movie I'm like yeah him fighting demons because i think this was like the year after hellboy so I'm like, yeah, that kind of seems cool, you know? But it's funny, because my mom's into these movies now. She likes I, Frankenstein. She likes those underworlds. So she was not into it at that time. So she was like, I'm not taking you to that. I'm not seeing that. Because <laughs> I was just a kid back then. <laughs> I was just like a little... I think I was just entering like freshman year, maybe 7th, 8th grade. around mm. that, Right around that time. Uh, but yeah, that was my history with it. And I didn't see it until years later, until I saw it like in the bargain bin, like $5 bin at Walmart. Finally got it, watched it. I liked it. No, wait. I might have rented it from the library first and then bought the movie. That might be it. But, yeah, I did like it. I did enjoy it. And that's basically my history with it because I watched it that once and then maybe watch it again and this would probably be my second or third time watching it today. But, yeah, that's my history with Constantine. So where do you want to start with the Constantine? Well, uh, just going down my notes, like my first, my first thing was uh, talking about the title, um, which I I did not realize. Like you already talked about it a little bit, I didn't realize that they changed it to Constantine because of Hellboy and Hellraiser. Yes, they didn't um, want to be associated with those because Hellraiser, I, I believe, went down the tubes, and then Hellboy oh, yeah. came out the year beforehand. So that's why. Yeah. I always figured they did that because, you know, I mean, Hell, Hellboy is one thing. Like, you see this giant red, you know, Ron Perlman. It's, it's kind, you can tell by the trailer that it's kind of like there's, there's kind of a nudge and a wink going mm-hmm. on there. Yeah. Um, but I feel like if you saw the trailer for Constantine and it was called Hellblazer, like a lot of people would be like, ah, I don't know if that's for me, you yeah, know. Right. And I figured that was probably why they why they changed it to Constantine. But it makes sense that they did it because of uh, because of Hellboy and Hell Hellraiser. Yeah. Because um, they all have similar things too. Because Hellraiser is about you know demons and box and supernatural, and Hellboy sort of about the supernatural as well. So. I could see them trying yeah. to avoid all that to say, no, we're doing something different. Don't associate I, us with that. Yeah. But I actually wrote down another note that uh, it's, I wrote, having an artifact almost makes it feel like a Hellboy movie, especially since it's wrapped in a Nazi flag. I th- um, think they mentioned that they used the same prop in one of the Hellboy movies. I'm not sure. It's oh, been really? a while. Yeah. It's been a while since I watched the <laughs> Hellboy movies, but. They mentioned that they used it as the same prop where it's in those movies. Well, I guess the one thing that was really kind of controversial at the time when the film came out was the fact that Keanu's Constantine is not like the comic book character Constantine. And I have only read the first two of the collected, you know, uh, I don't know what you call them. Omnibuses. Yeah, omnibuses. Yeah. Um, there's like 20 of them because, you know, this character has been around since the eighties, but, um, it's a hundred percent different. Like he's tall, dark hair, you know, very like dark personality, sarcastic. Whereas like the comic book Constantine, at least from the ones that I have read is like short, blonde, funny. He's sarcastic, but he's like sarcastic in a funny way. Not like a, you know dickish way i guess yes so but the thing about it is is like i didn't read any of the comic books until after i saw the movie Mm -hmm. so for me 
Keanu was like the baseline, yes. you know, for that character. Yes. Um, and I ended up watching, I, I, I wanted to watch these again for the, for this podcast, but I, I actually completely forgot to do it. Um, but the show that they did, I want to say like three or four years ago or five years ago, something like that. CW, um, right? Yes, yes, on the CW. It's a travesty that it only lasted one season because it was really good. <laughs> oh, a travesty that it played... lasted one season. I thought you said it was a travesty. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the no, the show was really good. Okay, yeah. Um, which which is you know why it sucks that it got canceled. But um, the guy who played it was great. You know, he was Constantine, the comic book Constantine. But at the same time, it's like I like Keanu's version. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know they were kind of joking around about a um, about a sequel in that that uh, Comic Con you know Q and A thing, and yeah. I was like, yes, give me a sequel, give me you know, <laughs> or or even a series. They they talked about even doing like a limited series on HBO, yeah. and I was like, yes, give me Keanu as Constantine. <laughs> I'm not one of these like hardcore comic book guys who's like no he has to be blonde and he has to be short and he has to be this and he has to be that i'm like give me keanu as constantine give me francis lawrence directing it like let's do this again yeah Have, bring back tilda swinton as gabriel like i want to see <laughs> Pete, more of peter stormare as satan because like he's oh, I, amazing he is, i like him but i think he's too old now to be honest he peter might Stormare. be yeah, yeah. He might be. Although it's kind of funny, um, he reminded me of that new Instagram star. Well, not he's not really new, but he's an old man. I forgot his like Leslie Jordan. Well, shit, how y'all doing? He's like this. Oh, that guy. Okay, I know who. Yeah, you're about. yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. the performance that uh, Peter Stormare reminded me of. It just reminded me of that little <laughs> Leslie Jordan going, "Well, shit, what are y'all doing, Constantine?" <laughs> <laughs> when I was a little boy, I would spin my little baton and be like, "Daddy, Daddy, watch me, watch me." <laughs> I just like, oh my god, that's hilarious! Like, I'm sure it's not intentional, but I just saw Leslie Jordan during this rewatch. I'm like, oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> but um, that yeah. would have been a coup of casting. <laughs> no, it's like that would be like for, if they ever make a remake, just bring in Leslie Jordan because <laughs> it's the same. Same kind of like uh, character basically that Peter Stormare was doing. Oh my goodness! But yeah, I, I I would like a sequel. I think that'd be cool. I think it'd be cooler as like um a series because it would be there would be time for it to breathe, time for it to build relationships, build on the mythos. Because I feel like like all these movies, like all these like superhero or comic book movies, they have so many great ideas that they want to adapt from the books and they're worried that they won't get a sequel so they try to like shove all it in in like one movie yeah. and i feel like this sort of suffers from that it made me think what if they did like a constantine movie but like how william freakin did the exorcist where it's it's taken seriously and it's treated like everything is real and it doesn't go too crazy with the CGI stuff, and there's no huge fight at the end. I feel like the fight at the end of a Constantine movie should just be, a, like, p- two people talking. <laughs> well, you, I yeah. know they kind of did that with this one, with the, um, him talking to Lucifer, but, like, uh-huh. they they did every Like, they had the room full of those people where he shoots the gun. They had him fight Tilda Swinton. It's just like, oh... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's a little too much of an action movie. Yeah. I understand why they probably felt like they had to do that. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know that Constantine is like a full-on action movie kind of thing. But I will say that, like, when I rewatched it the other day, I noticed there's that scene, they're in the hospital, and Constantine and Chaz are, like, trying to do the exorcism on Angela. Yes. And that specific scene felt very much like The Exorcist to me. They're doing the Roman, you know, uh, Nominu Patre or whatever. Spiritus Sante. Yeah, Spiritus (laughs) Sante. You know, it's just like 
that that whole scene felt very like exorcist i was surprised that like they didn't have angela like levitate up or something like that yeah i think that would have been too much <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the movie i like the the opening um oh god speaking of the opening hang on so did you know that roger ebert put this on his most hated list really he gave this movie one and a half stars and throughout his whole review, he's very sarcastic about the movie, and it was on his most hated list. <laughs> so that's why I know the guy's name is Hennessy, because he made a little snarky comment in his review. He's like, what is that, an advertisement for the alcohol? I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I did that with my research. I'm like, oh, that's funny. Roger Deber didn't even like it. And to me, it's not even that bad. Like, I watched the movie, I'm like, it's it's good. It, it It's not terrible. Like, to me, I, Frankenstein, is like, dumb 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 <laughs> but i i still enjoy it but it's dumb <laughs> it's, yeah that's like a one star two star movie dumb while constantine <laughs> it takes itself seriously but it, it fumbles it in that third act oh my god so but instead of keeping a harpy on the third act let's talk about things we do like i like keanu reeves in this movie because the thing i like about keanu reeves is he mostly knows how to pick roles that are suited for him. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, he's very good at that. Sometimes he knows, or he picks the right wrong roles, or maybe they hire him, like uh, Dracula, for example. Even though I love that movie, he's like the <laughs> Katie Holmes of Batman Begins in Dracula. He's like he's like the odd man out. <laughs> uh, and that's such a great analogy. <laughs> yeah, because like um, Katie Holmes, like she's not terrible in Batman Begins. But when you're like you know acting with against like Rutger Hauer, Morgan Freeman, Christian Bale, Michael Caine, freaking um, um, Liam Neeson, yeah, you look terrible, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like when you're like, like you have an all star cast and then there's that, you know. So like with Dracula, she's I mean, the runt of the litter. <laughs> yeah, and Keanu was the runt of the litter of Dracula, but I don't think that was his fault. I just think they hired him because you know he was the big star at the day, you know. Like, if it was done a year later, they would have probably got Brad Pitt or somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that him and Winona were, like, the the best, the e the best easiest way for Francis Ford Coppola to get all the money that he wanted. You know? Yeah. Like, if I can get these two in here, we're good. Yeah. And especially you got freaking Anthony Hopkins, who was, like, fresh off an Oscar. Yeah. But um, to wrap up the, you know, the thought that we started with is, I think Keanu is, like, really good... At picking roles, and that he, with this role, <laughs> it is so Keanu. Like there, I was watching this, and there was a point in the movie where I started just like, start, like what do you call? It? I let loose and stopped being tense because I was watching. I was like tense. I'm like, oh my god, am I gonna like this? I'm like, am I not gonna like it? Because it's been a long <laughs> time since I rewatched it. But the part that made me relax, like, ah, oh, this is Keanu, was when um. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf is driving the cab, and then he says, How much longer do I have to be your slave, John? You're not my slave, Chaz. You're my very appreciated apprentice. My Tonto Robin. One that skinny fellow with the fat friend. I was like, oh my god! That's Keanu! That's my Keanu! Because <laughs> I was watching him like, oh my god, Keanu's being so like, I'm badass, I'm tough guy, I'm sarcastic. <laughs> and then like, and he says, the fat guy, the skinny fella. I'm like, yes! That's totally him just like ad Because you know him, he's like, how about I reference Laurel and Hardy, but... I don't know their names because <laughs> I could totally see him being like that. Like, cause he loves cinema. That fucking yeah. guy made like a documentary about how much he loves <laughs> movies. And like, I could just totally see like, how about I reference Laurel and Hardy? Like <laughs> Constantine knows history, <laughs> but he, he like, he knows Tonto and Robin cause he watched them on TV, but he like watched Laurel and Hardy once. <laughs> I could totally see him doing that. But, like, that's the point where I'm like, okay, Keanu, this is Keanu. I'm good. <laughs> yes. I'm in good hands with Keanu. <laughs> he's do he's going to do me right. Okay. Can we also talk about how amazing Shia LaBeouf is in this movie? I personally think he was made for this role. He's perfectly sarcastic. Like, all of his timing is 
absolutely perfect all the time. Yeah. You know, I just love, I love his character. Yeah. I love the way he like plays him, the way he delivers his lines. It's like, yeah. I've never, I've never really been a big like Shia LaBeouf fan, Yeah. but him in this movie, he's, he's hilarious. I love it when he goes into the club and he's like, two frogs on a bench. No, 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 I'm with, I'm, I'm with the guy you just, John, John. I'm with him though. Red in a dress. Of course. Red in a dress. I'm just, I'm just testing him. I'm just testing. So, what are your favorite, like, real cool elements of Constantine? Okay, so the bit, the biggest thing that stood out to me on when I watched it the other day that I, for some reason, I just didn't really pick up on at the time was how much the film reminded me of Seven. That probably shouldn't be a big deal, but at the same time, like Seven's kind of like a high watermark for me. Yeah. The look and the feel of it, you know, Constantine's apartment is like the same building that like uh, the sloth apartment is. Oh, is it really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's wow. called the Pan American building. Huh. In Constantine, it says, like, bowl, bowl, bowl or whatever. Yeah. But it doesn't say that in Seven. It says something else. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, like, a supermarket or something like that. Yes, it's a supermarket. So that's why I was like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. The sort of, like, subdued, dark nature of the cinematography and the locations. It just has that look and feel of something else that I really love. Mm -hmm. And I think I connect the two. I think it's interesting that while Seven was explicitly filmed in Los Angeles, it is not set in Los Angeles. Yes. It's set in just sort of like a nameless big city somewhere. Yeah. Whereas Constantine is very explicitly set in Los Angeles. Yes. And, you know, the the interesting thing about Seven is it's anonymous. It's like raining all the time. Obviously in Los Angeles, in the real world in Los Angeles, it really doesn't rain that much. Right. And there's like no rain in Constantine at all. It's like the sun is just blaring down, especially in that first scene. Yeah. Um, with the possessed That felt girl. like L.A. Oh, my God. Yeah. That yeah. brought me it's, back. <laughs> it's very L.A. Yeah. Um, I really liked a lot of the stuff with Damone Hanzu um, doing Papa Midnight and yes. his... Uh, I liked I liked his portrayal of that character, first of all. And I liked the... Um, it kind of goes back to liking the production design of the film. Yes. Constantine wants to use the electric chair. Yes. And they go to that vault, and that vault is, like, just full of all kinds of, like, crazy, amazing stuff in yes. it. Yes, yes. Um, and I actually read, I after I watched the movie, I was looking up the locations because I was sure that, like, that Constantine's apartment was... This either it was either the same building as Sloss apartment, which it did end up being, or that it was a set that was based on that. Um, but when I was looking it up, um, that I found out that the set where the electric chair is, that's like an actual like mausoleum in mm. one of the um, big like old school Los Angeles like cemeteries, downtown cemeteries from oh. like the 1800s yeah um and i i mean i guess they let people film in it you know <laughs> um which seems kind of weird but um yeah i love the i love the production design i love the the just the look the cinematography and stuff of it and the feel that they create throughout the movie yeah um and i think that's i think that's where s at least some of my some of the draw for me is yeah is in that it was like because you mentioned uh, midnight one of the things i really liked where it, you totally went into like that old western movie or whatever where like the final showdown is when like mm -hmm. he's praying over like shia labeouf and then he goes to pray to keanu and keanu's like come on 
<laughs> and like Keanu just walks off and then it just like it zooms in on midnight and he's like still praying over Keanu I'm like oh my god that's totally like <laughs> go with God and like God's gonna sit this one out <laughs> yeah oh my god I love it but um the things I really liked about it is nothing is really explained it's just lived in world and you just like learn it as you go along until a certain point then it's just like ooh but you know, just it just goes on to the next scene, and he's sort of like his own like private investigator kind of stuff. So he's like, "All right, so I saw this happen at this thing. I gotta go see, you know, the half breeds, see what's up." And then he goes to see the half breeds, and then it sort of introducts uh, introduces the whole side plot with uh, Rachel Weisz, who becomes the main plot line. It's sort of that A plot line, B plot line, like of a TV show where they're separated, and it turns out they're related. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And which I really did like, and what else? I, I liked his sarcastic nature. One of my favorite parts in the movie is when he walks out of the the half breed church thing or whatever, wherever um, Tilda Swinton is, and he comes out, and he's like, "At least it's nice out," and it's like <laughs> downpouring. <laughs> yeah, I'm like yes, that's awesome. And then um, one of the parts that they cut out that I wish they kind of left in because. It would explain why that rag is so powerful later. But that rag that that guy pulls out of the bag, you know, he says, Oh yeah, you got these holy grenades, and you got this, you got that, you got dragon's breath. He pulls out that rag, but he doesn't explain what it is, but apparently it's deleted. That rag is one of the cloths that was for baby Moses. Like one of the shrouds for him. So when he lights it on fire and it like takes out all those demons, that's why it's so powerful, because it was like, religious and part of um, the Moses, you know, the religious history. Yeah, yeah, see, that that goes into what we were talking about earlier, where it's like, they went a little too far sometimes. We're not explaining with, some things, yeah. Yeah, with not explaining things, so. Yeah. I, I, I To this day, until you just said that, I still never knew what that was. Yeah. I just assumed that it was some kind of, like, like all that other stuff is our, is some kind of relic. I was like, oh, I yeah. guess that's some kind of relic. But um, the same thing with those yeah. brass knuckles. It turns out those are like blessed and they're like made from the metal from the crusade or the gold from the crusades. That it's never explained. I wish they did it's explained in the movie. <laughs> but like you know, it just comes in and it just kind of comes off as a gag, where he pulls out these brass knuckles with like crosses on there, and like yeah. punches him and like it kind of comes off funny. Like oh, he's pulling out brass knuckles with crosses on them but in well that's the thing is like i i never thought that they were anything particularly special beyond just brass knuckles with crosses on them right you know so that's where like well, that's what we've been talking about where it just it goes too far of not explaining things because there's some things that i wish they did explain but then again it'd be too too handholdy you know what i mean because yeah, I, I like yeah. what they did whereas these characters already know what it is there was one dumb line. There was one fucking Riker, <laughs> one Riker line in this movie with um, Rachel Weiss. She was, I believe, in the parking garage or somewhere. I forget where they were, but she's just like, sulfur. I'm like, oh, that's the Riker line. <laughs> no, that was, well, that was when, I think that was when she gets, a, a t when they get attacked by the demons, right? No, that's in the street. But then it comes in later when she says sulfur. I'm like, oh, you, you did the thing. Oh, okay. So maybe she's... Yeah, because she that's vomits. They, yeah. go, oh. they go to the building where um, Gavin Rosdale is? Yes, yes. They, they go to that um, bowling alley. That's where she says it. She's like, oh, okay. sulfur. But <laughs> before that, she like she vomited in the street. And he says, yeah, it, it happens to everybody. It's sulfur. And then... Five minutes later, they go to the bowling alley, and she's like, Sulfur. I'm like, ah, you, you did the thing. Oh, yeah, there's 666 in the bowling alley. Did you see that? Did you, did you see yeah. it, Stuart? It's, yeah. it's, it's a little, little thing. They put 666 on the wall. <laughs> did, did you know that? Did, did you see it? You know that I wish wasn't CGI, but was CGI? It What's was that? that locust, like, rat monster thing. I kind of wish that was just a practical suit or like a hobo that looked fucked up. You know, something like that thing from a Holland Drive who's behind yeah. the Winkies. It should have been something <laughs> like that. 
You know, yeah. that's so cool. Like some freaking demon just walking in the street and just comes up to him. You know, that and, was uh, actually one of my notes was like the C- the CGI in this movie, even in 2005, like didn't look that didn't look that good. Yeah. And then it, and then obviously like it didn't age very well either, <laughs> because Ooh. if you start out not looking good, you know, you're kind of dead in the water. Right. And this was right around that time where they were still experimenting with CGI because the year prior was Sin City, which just, like, was amazing. To me, that's still one of the greatest accomplishments of comic book where it just leaps off the page onto the screen. And then a year later, in 2006, you got 300, which also revolutionizes the whole stylized look of comic books. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, this is, like, right in that middle period that, oh... That poor middle period of the 2000s <laughs> where it's stuck in those, like, 90s movies. And it's trying to become modern. Yeah. Like, it's like, this is that baby step. It really is. Like, if it were made <laughs> now, it would like they would totally take it seriously. I don't think it would go goofy in the third act. I think it would have been, like, totally awesome badass all the way through, you know? Yeah. But, like, this was that time where they're like, eh, we got to make it comic booky, you know. But, yeah, yeah, like, what else did I like about it? There was um, Tilda Swinton I brought up already. She's so great in this movie. I wish there was more. Like, there should have been, like, two scenes or totally get rid of Bathazar and just, like, focus on Tilda Swinton, you know. Because Bathazar is so such, a, like, a non-character to me. Yeah, I feel like Balthazar is really only in there to kind of throw you off of the scent, Yeah, you know. Because it's like, to be honest with you, the only time that he is really useful is like the scene like after he gets like blown up or whatever, he get, <laughs> he like delivers a, a piece of useful information. Yeah, Silda Swinton, like, she should have been like the main villain. I like how it's like black wings and at the end she's wearing that like that weird outfit. She's got like white chaps on, leather chaps. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was like I I still to this day like I don't understand how they even came up with that outfit because it's such a mishmash yeah. of stuff. <laughs> it's just like who would wear all this? Apparently Lucifer had a more crazy look planned and uh, Peter Stormare is like, "No, I want to do this." So um, <laughs> apparently he was supposed to have black leather pants, shirtless, tattooed cover face tar on his feet with the dog collar with spikes on it. Mm. Yeah, that's like totally I, like left over from the 90s. Like yeah. That, that's like the crow. Hell's night. You know? I, I think the I think the white suit did him well. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> the, the shoeless thing walking in there going like, shit, well, yeah, I do, and John Constantine. I do want to yeah. say I have one quick character thing that oh. I forgot to mention. Yes. Um... <laughs> I, and for some reason, it actually didn't dawn on me until this time watching it. But I love when um, he's about to dunk Angela in his bathtub. So do I have to take the rest of my clothes off or can I them on? John? I'm thinking. She has this look like she's like disappointed. You know? There's so many times where she gets cucked where like <laughs> they're so close to kissing and he doesn't do it. <laughs> it's like I comes to the point where I'm like Constantine has never been with a woman and I I'm 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 glad that it's not like I'm glad they cut out the girlfriend because every time they cut to a part where it looks like they're going to kiss or could kiss. It doesn't happen. Like, the, one of the first <laughs> times it looks like they're going to kiss is when he's fighting with her in the hospital. What would you do? I don't know. What would you do? I don't know. Why did she do it? I don't know. Do you know what she did. And that looks like a kissing moment where, like, you know, in, in the wrapped up in the emotion, doesn't happen. And then later on with that scene within the bathtub, 
doesn't happen. And then later on when he's giving her the necklace, it looks like he's going in for a kiss and it doesn't happen. And <laughs> at the end of the movie, he gets really close and like says something to her. So, I've got some cleaning up to do. And there's no kiss. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh you God. just expect her at some point in time to be like, look, what the fuck is your problem? Like, what's wrong with you? Is there something wrong with me? <laughs> I'm giving you every chance, Constantine. Every chance. Oh, my God. It's so funny. Holy shit. But, yeah, he totally <laughs> just doesn't do it. He doesn't give in to it. Like, if they do a sequel to Constantine, I almost wanted to be like Escape from L.A., where it's the same exact movie. <laughs> <laughs> And you follow Just the in same a different beats. location, <laughs> different location, and the same beats. Like, um, um, because the Constantine thing of not kissing totally reminds me of whenever Snake Plissken meets a woman, and it mm. totally seems like they're gonna hit it off and like maybe have a relationship or kiss or you know go on the adventure together, and they instantly die. <laughs> 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 it happens in both movies almost at the same place and the same beat. Oh my god, I love it. Holy shit. I don't want to miss anything, because I am try- I just rewatched it. So I'm playing through the movie, so... One of the things I would cut out, if it were me, I would leave the intro of the man grabbing the spear, you know, heading towards the desert, and just leave it at that. That's the teaser. And then later on, when they do the chair thing, that's when it's revealed... On all those flashbacks that he's going to L.A., you know, for the thing, you know. Mm-hmm. By the time we see the flashbacks with um, Keanu when he's doing the chair, we already know that information. When the Constantine learned it, that's when we should also learn it. Like, oh shit, that's right, the guy from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Because there's there was a lot of times where... I felt like that stuff kind of broke up what was going on. Yes. And it's like, you know, you you find out at the beginning that this journey is happening. Like, I don't need to see him, you know, um, bust into the car and steal the car and all that stuff. Like, I, yeah. I don't need to see that. Like... You know, he starts on the journey and then he's there, you know, yes. it's like you're everything else is like not really that interesting. And you're yeah. going away from what is interesting in order right. to go back to that. Right. So and if they ever did that, I think it should have been like um, one of those one shot deals. Like, for example, I'm thinking of the one shot in like Terminator 2 where it's like John Connor drives by in a bike and then the... Arnold Schwarzenegger pulls up and you think he's looking for John Connor and he just missed him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It should have been like something like that where Constantine and the girl were walking by and then all of a sudden you pull back or, you know, he walks into frame and you're like, oh shit, it's the guy from the beginning of the movie. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah. So, I guess this wraps up today's episode on our Constantine. <laughs> I'm sure all that part will be cut out, you know, like our episode is probably going to be the last hour. (laughs) Yes. The last hour. Cause we were just chit chatting, catching up cause it's been like two months. Oh my God. Has it been? Has it been that long? I posted that podcast two months ago and I think we recorded last action here a month ago, two months ago. Cause I think when I posted the first episode, we were recording episode two, which is funny because I just posted episode two and now we're recording episode three. (laughs) <laughs> I guess that's how it's going to work. But is there something, like, you just got to step away from it for a while and then come back to it and then edit it, you know what I mean? It's, you just have to do that because when you edit it right away, I don't know, you cut out things that you shouldn't cut out. Because I feel like with that first episode, I feel like I might have cut out too much. I don't know. Maybe I should left some things in. Yeah, I think it's always good to, like, uh, get, like let something lay for a little while. Yeah. If you can, and then, like, come back to it. Yeah, because sometimes Cause, you're when when you've just recorded it, you're still a little too close to it. Yeah, because when we first recorded, it, I didn't know what the fuck we had. Because I'm like, oh my god, I don't know if that's an episode or not. Because <laughs> there's like a lot of times where you're like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> 
is this an episode or is this just three hours of two dudes talking? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I would ask you like a question, like, so what's your thoughts on that? And you're like, well, thoughts on like what? <laughs> and then I just had to explain it. And then you, you know, you, you said your thought. And you can't even tell in our that episode I made where it's just like it's just it's all smooth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think uh, that with the first one, I was just like, I think I was a little confused as as to like what you wanted, you yeah. know. And and it, and it kind of threw me off a little bit. But now that now that like I've been through the first one, now I understand it a little bit better. Yeah, we were just going through what we like about things, and then we just talk about it, just basically just chit chat, and then we just you know, chit chat that he cut it down to what it needs to be. Cause that last action hero one, I still can't believe it was three hours, but like I, I chopped it down to 90 minutes and it's like good 90 minutes. Like everything I cut was totally not related. And when you mentioned it, when you said, I, uh, I listened to it and there was a part where it slowed down and I walked away and it came back as natural. I know what part you're talking about. I think I know what part you're talking about. Cause I remember when I was editing it, I'm like, man, I haven't edited much in this section, but it's all natural. It's the part when we start talking about, mashups and movies and how people don't deep dive enough that's when i stopped oh, editing yeah, as yeah. much yeah but it's all natural though because i remember when i was first editing i'm like i haven't touched this up <laughs> but i went back through i'm like no this is good this is natural because i because <laughs> i realized i haven't i wasn't cutting as much as i was you know in the pre in the earlier in the episode i was like Let's see how it goes, but then after I listen to him, I'm like, oh, this is fine. I don't have to fix anything. Because <laughs> we were just both on the same page about like how people don't deep dive enough for movies. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So hang on. You were you were that dog in the flaming room. This is fine. <laughs> I ordered that Funko Pop. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's coming out in like um, November, I think. <laughs> It comes like that's a little awesome. coffee mug that says this is fine and he has like little flames next to him. <laughs> oh, Stuart! Oh my god, I can't believe you didn't pre-order the Halloween steelbook. Yeah, I, you told me about that and I was like, oh, I should get that and then I totally forgot about it. Damn it. So, whenever I, guess I it's out of stock now because... Oh yeah, because when it goes on sale, it goes out of stock. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. Because there was the funny thing is, whenever I got emails like reminding you, make sure you have your money in your account because you pre-ordered this. We didn't take the money out yet. Like you would always say it was in <laughs> stock. Yeah. So it was like when it finally went on sale. I'm like, oh, because when you said it's all sold out, and I'm like, oh, Stuart, it was there for like two <laughs> months. It was there. You could have had it. I know. Because I'm a similar boat with you. Because I wanted this. I, um, I wanted the steel book of Joker. But I totally missed out on it, yeah. and now I'm waiting for a re-release of Joker because with DC movies they release those like every six months in a different case, you know. Really? Well, basically, yeah. I don't know, I like, because there's, there's like some covers out there at Walmart because at Walmart they actually had a steel book collection where all the covers were comic book inspired. Like they hired artists to draw like a Batman vs Superman cover. A Suicide Squad cover and a cover for like um, what was the other one? Justice League. Mm -hmm. It was actually like comic book inspired steel books. I'm like, oh man, and I was waiting for the steel book for the new Joker, and I'm like, Ugh. so I finally just ended up buying it because my mom's like, just buy it, and then when the steel book comes out, you'll have like two copies. You already have copies of everything. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Because <laughs> like this Halloween, I don't need it. I have the DVD. I have the VHS. I have the special edition Blu-ray that's signed by Nick Castle. I don't need the 4K, but I got it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got that beautiful steelbook artwork on it. I know. I'm like, but it's like I'm like Wayland Smithers. She's got a new hat. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing, dude. Like I almost did that with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Like I bought the um, I bought the steel book yeah. for it, and and I also bought the um, the like collector's edition that has the uh, it's the one that has the forty five record. Yes. Yep. Um, and then Amazon had just like the regular four K Blu Ray, um, just like the standard version. Yeah. that you can buy they they were like having i think like a 24 hour sale on it where it was like 12 dollars or something like that and yeah. i was like 
ooh, should I buy that? And I was like, I've already got two copies of this movie. Like, why? But I'm like, <laughs> but I'm like, it's the it's the other version of it. Like, I want to, <laughs> I gotta get it. You know, it's I don't you know, have that should, version. You should do it. You know, I just have like that could be your thing. You just collect the different versions of Once Upon a Time. That's like legitimate. <laughs> That's like legitimate, right? It's legitimate. I mean, if you if you love a movie that much, you know, and you just it's, collect I up, think it's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, yeah, I, I support that, Stuart, because, you know, you're not going to, that's not going to release it that many times, but, because, <laughs> like, with Beetlejuice, this freaking thing, like, I already have the DVD, I'm totally fine with the DVD, but, like, when they released the 4K, I'm like, I need that shit on 4K, and then not only was it on 4K, <laughs> but they bought, they had it in that fake book with the chalk and, like, the iron-on sticker and the, the fake newsprint that says Beetlejuice, 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 I'm like, I need to get mm-hmm. that. Oh, man. <laughs> but I'm into that now. I'm like, man, whenever they have like little collector things, I'm like, ooh, I should get that. Except for Friday the 13th, I can't pull the trigger on that. Even though oh, it's the sh- so... the Shout Factory thing? Yes, it was so tempting. So tempting, Stuart. You're going to regret that. Uh, yeah. Okay, we need to close. We actually have to record an outro for this. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, we that was our discussion on Constantine. So, Stuart... Any final thoughts on this episode? I think that, like, Constantine is a fun film, and it's sort of a weird, supernatural, you know, kind of like Fincher-esque kind of thing you know and i love it for that Mm -hmm. it's not a great film but you know i i do enjoy it it's it's one that i've seen a lot of times and i will probably still continue to go back to a lot of times yes so and i would recommend it because i think it's it's a good movie it's not excellent it's not film classic or anything like that i would recommend it I really do like how it just, you know, everything is not spoon-fed to you. It doesn't hold your hand. The The world's already established. But yeah, so that's been today's episode. And uh, me and Stuart have discussed the next episode. We think, was it Spielberg or were we going to talk about... Um, what was the other thing? I'm wondering about? if we should talk about John Carpenter's vampires at some point in time. So see you next month, guys. <laughs> Stuart, you gotta say goodbye. You gotta say goodbye. See you real soon. Bye.